The 30th of January, 1933, Germany. Adolf Hitler is appointed Chancellor of Germany, and the Nazi regime quickly begins to restrict the civil and human rights of the Jews and other individuals deemed to be enemies of the state, and opens the first concentration camp, Dachau, situated near Munich. The regime targets not only the Jews and political prisoners, but also Afro-Germans, who are discriminated against and persecuted despite their relatively small presence in Germany. Even though the Nazis do not have an organized program to eliminate them, an unknown number of black people in Germany and German-occupied territories would be sterilized, incarcerated, or murdered. On the 11th of November, 1918, the First World War ended when the German leaders signed the armistice in the Compiègne Forest in France. The introduction of new weapons like the machine gun and gas warfare led to enormous losses, and the war claimed the lives of 10 million soldiers. Property and industry losses were catastrophic. As a result, the victorious powers imposed a series of treaties upon the defeated powers. Among the treaties, the 1919 Treaty of Versailles held Germany responsible for starting the war and liable for massive material damages. The treaty imposed harsh penalties on the Germans, including the loss of 13% of its pre-war territories, extensive reparation payments, and the demilitarization of the Rhineland in Western Germany, which following World War I was occupied by the victorious Allies. The use of French colonial troops, some of whom were black, in these occupation forces heightened anti-black racism in Germany. Racist propaganda against black soldiers falsely depicted them as rapists of German women and carriers of venereal and other diseases. The German press derogatorily referred to the children of black soldiers and German women as the Rhineland bastards. The Nazis viewed Afro-Germans, children with one African parent and one German parent, as a threat to the purity of the Germanic race. In his 1925 autobiography, Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler said, The Jews had brought the Negroes into the Rhineland with a clear aim of ruining the hated white race by the necessarily resulting bastardization. In the 1920s, some African Americans traveled to Weimar, Germany, which was the government of Germany from 1918 to 1933, where they could freely eat in restaurants, stay in hotels, go to the theater, and perform at mainstream venues. However, after the Nazis came to power in January 1933, Germany was no longer safe or appealing for African Americans. The Nazi German regime was explicitly racist, which included a wholesale rejection of African American culture, such as jazz and swing music, that were increasingly popular at the time. During the Nazi regime, Afro-Germans were marginalized in German society, isolated socially and economically, and not allowed to attend university. Racial discrimination prohibited them from seeking most jobs. In addition to being persecuted for their race, Afro-Germans were persecuted for other reasons as well. Such was the case of Hilarius Gilgis, an Afro-German dancer and communist activist from Dusseldorf, born in 1909. Gilgis was one of the few black Germans born in the country before the First World War, and in the mid-1920s, he joined the German communist youth. Because of his radical political stance, he was arrested in 1931 and sentenced to one year in prison. After his release in 1932, he continued as an active communist agitator, after the Nazis seized power in January 1933, Gilgis attempted to go into hiding, but his visibility due to his skin color made this difficult. In June 1933, he was arrested, and on the following day, his body was found under a bridge. The perpetrators, who killed Gilgis for his politics as well as his race, are believed to have been six members of the Gestapo, the German secret state police and SS. By the end of 1937, the Gestapo had secretly rounded up and forcibly sterilized many Afro-Germans. Some were subjected to medical experiments, others mysteriously disappeared. Children were no exception. The Nazis forcibly sterilized a group of Afro-German children, whom they derogatorily called the Rhineland Bastards. Most of these children were the progeny of French colonial troops from Africa that were stationed in the Rhineland region after World War I. The Second World War began on the 1st of September, 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. In response to Japan's bombing of Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December, 1941, the United States quickly declared war on Japan, and four days later, on the 11th of December, Adolf Hitler responded by declaring war on the United States, even though the US had only declared war on Japan. 
Consequently, many American citizens, including some African Americans, were interned throughout Germany and German-occupied Europe as enemy aliens. Such was the case of Josef Nassi, a black expatriate portrait artist of Jewish descent who held a US passport. In 1942, Nassi was arrested in German-occupied Belgium as an enemy alien. He was then interned and held for seven months in the Bivalu transit camp. He was later transferred to Germany, where he spent the rest of the war in Laufen internment camp and its subcamp, Titmorning, both located in Upper Bavaria. By early 1945, 850 men holding American and British passports, including a dozen black men, were interned at Laufen and Titmorning. Conditions in these camps were much better than in concentration camps. Throughout his three-year imprisonment, Nasi created a unique visual diary of more than 200 paintings and drawings. The camp commandant actually encouraged Nasi to paint and give art lessons to other internees, and many of Nasi's works depicted daily life in the internment camps. The life that Nasi depicted was obviously restricted, and his work stressed features such as barbed wire, watchtowers, walls, gates, and prison bars. Rules of the Geneva Conventions, which protect people such as prisoners of war, the wounded, and civilians who are not or are no longer taking part in hostilities, did govern conditions in civilian internment camps, including Laufen and Titmorning, where Nasi was confined from 1942 to 1945. Nasi and other internees in these camps were not detailed for forced labor, and they usually had enough food thanks to Red Cross packages that supplemented German rations of bread and soup. The US Third Army liberated Laufen on the 5th of May, 1945. Nasi and nearly all the internees at Laufen and Tetmorning, including 50 Jews, survived the war. Many of the Jews had obtained false papers showing British, US, or South American citizenship. Another of Titmorning's prisoners was an African-American horn and piano player, Freddie Johnson. By the mid-1930s, Nazi authorities had banned all foreign, non-Aryan music in Germany, including jazz, which Nazi ideology deemed to be immoral. However, the campaign to rid the country of jazz did not stop American artists such as Johnson from going abroad to share their art. In December 1941, he was arrested in German-occupied Amsterdam and interned at the Titmorning prisoner of war camp. Once in a while, despite the oppression of prisoners in the camps across German-occupied Europe, the sound of jazz could be heard. For many, musical talents helped them survive another day. In February 1944, Johnson was released from the camp in a prisoner exchange. However, rules of the Geneva Conventions did not apply at the nearby Dachau concentration camp and other camps across German-occupied Europe. There, prisoners were brutally exploited for forced labor, and many died from exhaustion, starvation, and other harsh conditions. Those black people who fought in World War II against Nazi Germany as members of the Allied militaries and were caught and held as prisoners of war fared far worse than those in civilian internment camps. Black prisoners of war faced imprisonment and mistreatment at the hands of the German military, who did not uphold the regulations imposed by the Geneva Conventions. Black soldiers of the American, French, and British armies were worked to death on construction projects or died as a result of mistreatment in concentration or prisoner of war camps. Others were never incarcerated, but were instead immediately killed by the SS or Gestapo. Despite segregation in the military at the time, more than one million African Americans served in the US armed forces during World War II. Such was the case of Benjamin O. Davis Jr. During World War II, Davis was commander of the 99th Fighter Squadron and the 332nd Fighter Group, which escorted bombers on air combat missions over Europe. Davis flew 60 missions in Mustang fighters and was one of the first African-American pilots to see combat. Davis survived the war and became the first African-American Brigadier General in the US Air Force. Some African-American members of the US Armed Forces were liberators and witnesses to Nazi atrocities. In the camps, they found piles of unburied corpses and barracks filled with dead and dying prisoners. After months and years of maltreatment, starvation, and forced labor, the small percentage of prisoners who survived often required immediate assistance. One such witness of the Nazi atrocities was Leon Bass, an African-American soldier who in April 1945 was among the American troops who liberated the Buchenwald concentration camp. Leon Bass later said, the day that I walked through the concentration camp gates of Buchenwald and I saw what I saw, I can never say that I am callous about human life. It made me know that human life is sacred, 
because when I walked through those gates in the spring of April 1945, I was totally unprepared for what I saw, and I saw what I can refer to now as the walking dead. I saw human beings there that had been beaten and starved and tortured and so mistreated that they were nothing but human skeletons. They were skin and bone, and they had those skeletal faces with the deep-set eyes, and their heads had been clean-shaved, and they were standing there holding on to one another, and they were so thin. And I, I just said to myself, my god, what is this? This is some kind of insanity. Who are these people? What did they do that was so wrong? And that's when I found out that they were Jews, gypsies, some were Jehovah's Witnesses, they were trade unionists, they were communists, they were homosexuals. There were so many different groups placed in that camp by the Nazis. And what did the Nazis use as a yardstick as to who would be chosen to go there? They said those people were not good enough. Those people were inferior. They could be segregated. So you see what I mean? Segregation, racism, can lead to the ultimate. To what I saw at Buchenwald. With the exception of its white officers, the 183rd Engineer Combat Battalion, of which Leon Bass was a member, was made up entirely of black soldiers. After battling for freedoms and defending democracy worldwide, African-American soldiers returned home in 1945, only to find themselves faced with the existing prejudice and Jim Crow laws, which legalized racial segregation. Racial segregation in the United States Armed Forces officially ended only in 1948. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Please help us to create more videos by clicking on the donation link. Thank you and see you next time on the channel.